season three begins with us very much heading in the right direction. The dragons have got a bit bigger and you're starting to see what they'll end up becoming. We're headed to Astapor because we've got our ships and now we need an army. Some say the Unsullied are the greatest soldiers in the world. The greatest slave soldiers in the world. She debates whether the, the Unsullied would truly be behind her because she's paid them to. Once I own an army of slaves, what will I be? Piat Pri has sent a warlock to try and kill me, and I'm saved by Sebastian Selmy. The honor is mine, my queen. He pledges allegiance to me because he was head of the Kingsguard for my father. I've been searching for you, Daenerys Stormborn, to ask your forgiveness. I will not fail you again. Egret's taking him to meet Mance Raider, and this is going straight into enemy territory. He doesn't rate his chances of survival particularly high. Don't look so grim, Jon Snow. If Mans Raider likes you, you'll live another day. And if you don't... When Jon first walks into Mance's camp, he meets Tormund. What do we want with the baby claw? This baby killed Corrin Athan. Mance is a legendary figure. He used to be part of the Night's Watch. Why do you want to join us? I saw Craster take his own baby boy and leave it in the woods. I saw what took it. And why would that make you desert your brothers? I want to fight for the side that fights for the living. Do you know how long it's going to take us to get to King's Landing, Morgan, through fields and forests? Yes. One thing Jamie's very good at, he's very good at, at, at sniffing out people's weaknesses. Move. He wants her to lose it with him so that he will get the opportunity to, to get out of his chains and get rid of her. And then they reach this bridge, and finally he gets the opportunity. <laughs> It's unbelievable. He goes from one bad situation to a horrible situation. So we have the wonderful lock here. Let us go. My father will pay you whatever you want. Enough to buy me a new head. The season three starts with Rob really just wanting to fight someone. And they get to Harrenhal, and again, he can't fight anyone. And worse than that, the people loyal to him have been slaughtered in the most horrific way. Find her a chamber that will serve as a cell. She's your mother. She freed Jamie Lannister. The Lannisters robbed them of their sons, and she robbed them of their justice. When we arrive, I get the message that Winterfell, after being taken by Theon, has now been burnt to the ground, and it looks like Bran and Rickon may be dead. By the time Bolton's bastard got to Winterfell, the Ironborn were gone. They massacred everyone and put the castle to the torch. And Bran and Rickon have not been found. Bran and Rickon have fled Winterfell and no one has heard from them. But there's a brother and a sister that come. I'm Jojen Reed. This is my sister, Mira. We've come a long way to find you, Brandon. They realize he has this power, but he doesn't know anything about it. And we have much farther to go. So it's about educating him so that he can actually become what he becomes. Theon may have taken them back to the Iron Islands as hostages. Have you heard anything from Theon at all? What's your name? Theon Greyjoy. What is your name? Greek. My name is Greek. First of all, they're in the woods trying to find her family. Not necessarily home, just somewhere where she thinks her family may be. And they come across the Brotherhood. They don't know who she is. They don't really want anything to do with her. You can finish your meals before you go. You'll free us? I give you my word. The hound had been drinking too much, you know? He's an angry man and a bit lost. I mean, where's the hound going to go? So I think he was found drunk under a tree. There's not all his wits about him. Just as she's this close from the door, the Hound recognises who she is. Girl! Then tells the rest of the Brotherhood who she is. What in seven hells are you doing with the Stark bitch? Sansa finds a new friend in season three, Marjorie. It is my honour to present my grandmother, the Lady Olena of House Tyrell. Pretty much as soon as she's introduced to them, they talk about Joffrey. I want you to tell me the truth about this royal boy, this Joffrey. Sansa tells them what he's really like. He's a monster. Oh, that's a pity. Tell me what you think of her. Who? Marjorie. She's an ideal match. The Tyrells beside us will crush the Northerners. 
The new relationship between Marjorie and Joffrey, I think, scares Cersei a lot. Cersei's really threatened by Marjorie because she's younger and she's more beautiful, she's very smart. But Cersei sees all that. She knows she's a game player. She married a traitor and known degenerate like Renly Baratheon for a reason. She married Renly Baratheon because she was told to. That's what intelligent women do, what they're told. This is what these seasons are becoming about is her loss of that one thing that kept her sane because she believes him, you know, he's going to be the next king and she would reign through him. The Lord of Harren Hall will make a worthy suitor for the widow Arryn. For which I am extremely grateful to you. You'll leave for the Eyrie as soon as possible and bring Lysa Arryn into the fold. Tywin wants to secure everything and he figured Littlefinger would be a great person to go up there and take charge. Lady Arryn and I have known each other since we were children. She has always been positively predisposed toward me. But Lord Baelish's absence would present certain problems. The royal wedding may end up being the most expensive event in living memory. Not a good time to leave the Crown's finances unattended. Which is why I'm naming you new Master of Coin. They sort of don't really recognize Tyrion as being so instrumental in saving King's Landing. The rebels came for Joffrey's head. They lost their own. Thanks to father. Thanks to father. The Unsullied, who are fundamentally a slave army, do exactly as they're told. When she meets the Unsullied, she realizes that she will take the Unsullied, if only to save them. There's a small amount of bartering that goes on until she kind of pulls out the Ace of Spades. I have dragons. I'll give you one. When she hands over the dragon, she swapped the dragon for the whip, which means that she's the master. So she tells them they need to kill all of the slavers. Go again! Axios and das, Mentios and das, Urne Lue Dolere, Prisa das! Tessana! Dracaris. Orel! Orel, he's a warg, um, and he can look through the eyes of his animal, which is an eagle. He reports back that he's seen dead crows he's at the Fist of the First Men. When we reach the Fist of the First Men, we discover that there's a kind of horrific pattern of dead horses that's been made, and Mance is quick to point out that this is the work of the White Walkers. Always the artists. Mance decides that John should go with the climbing party over the wall for the basic reasons that John knows more about the wall than anybody else. If he's useful, good. If not, throw him off the wall. See if crows can fly. These, these men, all these soldiers, they, they've been on the road for God knows how long, and, and now suddenly they have this woman. Jamie knows what's gonna happen. He knows before it happens. But then when it does happen, he, he for some reason, I think it surprises himself. He can't just stand by, so he makes up this story. Her father's Lord Selwyn Tarn. Lord Selwyn would pay his daughter's weight in sapphires if she's returned to him. So Locke he thinks about that, and his greed is stronger than his lust, I guess. So he takes it out on Jamie instead. <laughs> we get the news it's that Rob's grandfather is dead at River Run. Rob's very much aware that he needs the army that his mother's family command as well. So they set off to go to River Run for the funeral of his grandfather and to discuss what happens next. And when we get there, Rob meets again the Blackfish and Edmure, Catelyn's brother. Edmure has come up with two Lannister prisons. Willem Lannister, Martin Lannister. Willem and Martin Lannister are 14 years old. Lord Karstadt takes it upon himself during the night to slaughter these two young boys chained up in a prison cell. Rob understands why he's done it, but as a king and as a just leader, he can't allow that to go unpunished. Rickard Karstadt, I sentence you to die. When Rob carries out the sentence on Lord Karstark, Rob loses half his army. The Karstarks are gone. They need more men. They need help. He needs to make amends with the people he's betrayed, which is the phrase. But because of Rob's breaking off his promise by marrying Talisa when he had been promised to one of Walder Frey's daughters, they are very skeptical about approaching Walder Frey. And rightly so. He sends two sons as an envoy. And Walder Frey has said, yes, we will help you. But the sting in the tail is that Edmure must marry one of Walder Frey's daughters. Could I see her first? You want to count her teeth? 
He's disgusted because everybody in the land knows that nobody in any right mind would want to marry Frey. The Brotherhood take her to see their leader. His name is Beric Dundarian. She's not particularly happy about it, but they're not hurting her, so it could be worse. <laughs> you know, he's a knight, but he's, he's with all these guys in rags, and they look like a bunch of swine herds. If you mean to murder me, then bloody well get on with it. You'll die soon enough, but it won't be murder. For some bizarre reason, they, they choose uh, trial by combat. Beric gets a sword down his shoulder and topples over and dies. But somehow Beric Dundarian is uh, born again with the help of Thoris. It was really pretty spooky stuff. How many times have you brought me back? It's the Lord of Light brings you back. How many times? This makes six. What are you going to do with me? The first light will ride for River Run. Your brother's there now. What have we here? Frozen crows? We can talk inside, can we? Mormont and a depleted group of other rangers make it back to Craster's Keep, alive. May you feed that pig better than you feed us. The pig's got value to me. <coughs> it's at this point that a rebellion starts. I shall have your head. <coughs> we have to go, now! I now am a woman on a mission. I've saved 8,000 slaves, and I've got a thirst for wanting to save more people. So we move on to Yunkai. The Yunkish train beds, these, not soldiers. We're going to defeat them. But they won't meet us on the field. They have strong walls. Belmulte iva straske sir ponte jorina, se ponja obulia yon mazurina. So I then set up camp and hear the slavers of Yunkai, and I kind of lay down the law for them. You will release every slave in Yunkai. Reject this gift, and I shall show you no mercy. You are mad. We are not Astapor or Karth. We are Yunkai. Those who survive, we shall enslave once more. Perhaps we'll make a slave of you as well. Now get out. I give them a little bit of a fright with the dragons, and then I decide that I'm going to kill them. Before John, Egret, Tormund, and Morel climb the wall, Egret sort of coerces John into a, a secret place she knows. Egret! And decides to really test A, whether he's a crow, and B, whether he loves her. I don't ever want to leave this cave, Jon Snow. And John does betray his vows. I think it's at that point that he falls in love with Egret. It's a rare moment in the story where we have a purely happy moment between two characters. When John and the others are climbing the wall, which is 800 feet of ice, there a, a part of the wall breaks off, leaving John dangling on the end of a rope as well as Egret. And it's only right at the last minute that John manages to save them both. Finally, they get to Arnold, the castle. Lord Bolton, I give you the Kingslayer. We have a dinner with Roose Bolton. I will allow you to go to King's Landing as restitution for the mistakes my soldiers made. And you will swear to tell your father that I had nothing to do with your maiming. My lady? She won't be going with you. When Jamie leaves Arnold, he leaves with a bad taste in his mouth. I'm leaving her with Locke. Don't you worry about your friend. We'll take good care of her. But then on the road, he finds out that it's only a matter of time when they're going to kill her. And he, again, surprises himself in a way he so wants to just not care. But he does, and he goes back. We're taking it to King's Landing, unless you kill me. Well, we must be on our way. Spotted a Lannister raiding party. How far? Less than a day's ride south. Time for a lion hunt. They say, oh, we're going to go and kill some Lannisters, and then we'll take you home. I swear to you, this isn't any... You're a liar! They're all distracted, getting on their armor and things like that. So she sees her opportunity, and she goes for it. Hang guy, bring her back. Come back, <laughs> Then get stopped by the Hound. Kick all you like, wolf girl. Won't do you no good. He sees a chance of using Arya as uh, a bargaining chip. Is that the Blackwater? That's the Red Fork. I'm taking you to the twins. Your uncle's marrying one of the Frey girls, your mother and brother. 
will be there, and they'll pay me for you. So a great road trip begins. Littlefinger comes along and he says to Sansa, he's got a ship and he could take her with him. Please, Lord Baelish, tell me what to do, tell me when. She, yet again, thinks she's gonna get out of here. You must see Highgarden. I don't think the Queen would let me leave King's Landing. Marjorie wants to marry Sansa off to her brother, Loras Tyrell. Once I marry Joffrey, I'll be Queen. And if you were to marry Loras, which Sansa is over the moon about. She's getting married to a guy that's actually nice. The Tyrells are plotting to marry Sansa Stark to Sir Loras. We need to find Sansa Stark a different husband. He tells Tyrion he's gonna marry Sansa, which I find hilarious. Then kind of within the same breath, lets me know that I'll be marrying Marjorie's brother. Tyrion will do as he's bid, as will you. What do you mean? We will marry Sir Loras. I will not. Which you will. This arranged marriage to Sansa doesn't go very well. She doesn't like that news at all. She wasn't going to go on Littlefinger's ship because she was being married to Loras. Now Littlefinger sailed away. She's getting married to Tyrion, who she didn't want to get married to. So, am I invited to your wedding? Shay is pretty gutted about this marriage to Tyrion. Especially now that she's Sansa's handmaiden. Listen to me, my lady. I'm not your lady, I'm your whore. He's vulnerable, Tyrion, and that's very frightening to him. The wedding to Tyrion, in Sansa's eyes, it was the worst day of her life. He's a Lannister, he, she's not gonna trust him. Joffrey, of course, takes great glee in this new relationship and uh, torments both of them, as, as he usually does. Time for the bedding ceremony. There will be no bedding ceremony. There will be if I command it. I'm sure Tyrion did not mean to threaten the king. Your uncle is clearly quite drunk, Your Grace. Stop. But your father... I won't share your bed. Not until you want me to. What if I never want you to? And so my watch begins. Only one old man and eight good horses. Let's carve him up. We just take the horses and go. The old man's no threat. There's a storm coming. As good a place as shelter as any. Wildlings. Bran and Rickon and Osha and Hodor are in the windmill that is just by where John is. Do their paths just miss each other? Neither of them know that they're there. Cut his throat or he'll tell the crows we're here. The man, you know, has to be killed and it's a rel who suggests that it should be John who does it to prove that he's a wildling. Kill him! Aurel and Tormund are about to kill John when two direwolves attack. It's Bran who goes into his walk mode and into summer to attack the wildlings and save John. When we arrive at the Freys, Lord Frey wants to make sure that this wedding happens here and now, before we go back to war, or so that's what we're led to believe. If you think the time is right, Lord Walder, by all means, let us bed them. As the, the bedding party exits, the lights dim. Then literally as the door closes, the band strike up, and that is what makes Catelyn turn around and think, what is going on here? Something is about to happen. completely believes that she's going home. She's with one of the most powerful guys she's ever met, and he actually is trying to help her. This is our chance of getting into the wedding by using the salt pork wagon. Turn this cart around and get the hell out of here. Lord Waldo then stops the proceedings. Bruce Bolton comes over to the table and sits beside Catelyn, and that's when the enormity of the situation strikes her. <laughs> This sea of arrows come at them. And Walder Frey is basically enjoying every moment of this. Just as we were coming in, everyone was killing each other. She realizes everything's going wrong, and she doesn't even know why. So it was time to change the plan. Plan B, get the hell out there. It's too late. The hound at the last minute managed to just grab her from behind and knock her out. 
At the same time, Catelyn's trying to say to her son, get out, but he won't leave his dying wife. Mother. Bruce Bolton walks up to Rob and whispers something in his ear and then stabs him. The Lannisters send their regards. She just loses it. Ah! When Joffrey gets the news of the Red Wedding, this is the best day of his life. I walk into the small council chamber and everyone else sort of knows what has happened. I don't. Killed a few puppies today. Rob Stark is dead. Joffrey loves every second of it. Command Lord Frey to send Rob Stark's head. I'm going to serve it to Sansa at my wedding feast. She is no longer yours to torment. Everyone is mine to torment, you little monster. Monsters are dangerous, and just now kings are dying like flies. She finds out that her brother and her mother have been killed. Sansa. It is very unexpected. All her hopes are dashed, like, every single time. She is pretty bitter. The usurper Rob Stark is dead, betrayed by his bannerman. Despite his loss at Blackwater, the threat of Stannis is still present. It's from Meister Aemon of the Night's Watch. Their Lord Commander is dead. What he saw beyond the wall, it's coming for all of us. Stannis appears to be more determined in his desire for the throne. This war of five kings means nothing. The true war lies to the north, my king. Death marches on the wall. Only you can stop him. So Sam and Gilly head towards the wall together to go back to the Night's Watch. The Night Fort's closest to Castle Black. It's got a secret sally port. It leads through the wall right down into the Night Fort. It's empty. Let's find a place to sleep. So they come across Bran and Hodel. Come with us. We'll walk straight to Castle Black. Take us north of the wall. Why in the world would I you want to go? I don't want to. I have to. Now he comes back to King's Landing, and then, of course, no one recognizes him. Step aside, country boy. But he makes it up to Cersei, and then he sees her, and they just look at each other. This is really the moment where he really realizes that I'm no longer the same man. She's ecstatic because she's got the one person she trusts back, but he comes in missing the thing that makes him who he is as a man. They're both a bit like, who are you? You know, there's a lot happened since they haven't seen each other. After John escapes, Egret catches up to him. I have to go home now. I know you won't hurt me. You know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> John survives, and we find him right at the end of season three, collapsing off his horse and being dragged into Castle Black. Carry him inside. And we leave him not knowing whether he'll be safe or not. Under the cover of nightfall, I send my best men in through a side entrance to the city of Yonkai and have them murder all of the slavers and so that they can then release all of the slaves. And when she finds that they've been successful, they come back to wait outside the gates of Yunkai to see what the fallout will be. And then the slaves come out, and the, the, the person they see is Danny, the woman who's saved them. Misa! Misa! The word that comes out of their mouth is Misa, which means mother. And it's this moment that Danny, for the first time, sees what her new dream is going to be, and she realizes the possibility of how many more there are to save. And it's this wonderful moment of them looking to her as a mother and her kind of accepting their love and becoming a leader.